Hey guys, so I spent a pretty substantial amount on installing PPF for my car around two and a half years ago. And ever since then, my car has taken approximately 40,000 plus kilometers and it's been used heavily, like really, really abused. I've taken it on track, I've taken it on constant morning drives where I'm chasing after Ferraris, A45S, and just throwing my car with stone chips, okay? And also, I've taken it to a 6,000 plus kilometers drive all the way to Thailand, and I didn't wash my car for a month. It was filthy, it was being abused again and again and again. So how did the PPF hold up? In this video, we're gonna do a little inspection on a, the PPF, do a little review. Did it actually, you know, do its work? And to find out more about that, we're gonna peel off the PPF and we're gonna see the paint condition and to see as well, by the act of pulling off, does it damage my paint? And to see if this is all worth it and also see if there's any regret in installing this PPF with XBAL, right? More of that in this video. Okay, so as you can see, from a medium to far distance from the camera, there isn't any much visible damage on the car. You know, and compared to how the car was, when I had three months without PPF, it was just littered with stone chips. You could see it even from that side. I'm gonna put, show you a video of how it looked like, okay? So that's the exterior from far. Let's zoom in to see how it looks like. So I'm gonna just steal the camera from my camera guy. <laughs> Thank you, Ina. And we're gonna go look at it up close, okay? Again, even at this distance, it's not visible at all, okay? Stone chips, 99.9% .9 protected. In that aspect, I'm very, very happy. And only on the lower side over here, let's see, there are a lot of blisters, okay? So if you have a stone chip that's flying in too fast, then you're gonna cut the PPF, right? And um, I know for some of you, like, oh my gosh, the PPF didn't do its work. Well, if you can block out 99% of stone chips, again, I'm going to show you one more video again of how it was before. It was littered with stone chips. So consider that if without this, two and a half years, this would have been like, a, you know, like Pulau Radang, like a sandy beach. <laughs> that, that's not going to be fun at all, right? But here you can feel overall it's actually smooth. There's not no any rough surface, so on and so forth, okay? But what we're going to do later on, we're going to peel out this PPF and see did it actually sacrifice itself to protect the car or did it actually pierce through and damage the bumper? We'll find out more about that in this video, all right? But overall, very happy. Okay, second thing that most people are concerned about PPF, well, I've experienced this before, is this coloration, okay? Now, you can see this panel and this panel, PPF, no PPF. But look at that, all right? they are of the same color. So this coloration hasn't happened on this PPF at all, all right? Now, a little caveat. If you don't want the PPF to discolor, you have to maintain it. So I recommend that you wash it often, okay? And send it to maintain at local Expel outlet because, you know, PPF needs some maintenance. Like not you'll start to discolor, right? And I found that if I do it often, it does help to prevent the discoloration, all right? And Expel also has a six-year warranty on discoloration as well, right? Now, this is very important because there are some other PPF brands out there which I've tried to get quotes from them, and the moment they found out that your color is white, for example, they would highly even reject doing PPF for your car, and they don't want to do half-half because it will look obvious after a while. Why Expel is confident is because of not just, you know, a lot of people focus on thickness and stuff, but it's the quality of the material, the top coat and the TPU material, okay, which allows it an excellent retainment of gloss and, and stop it from discoloring over a period of time, okay? Now, another thing to really look at is the shrinking because I've seen how PPF shrink and I've, have, I've seen that in my previous installation of PPF on my M235i, but look at this. If there is, it's really minimal. All right, I think there's a video of me doing a one-year review. We can refer to that video. I think it hasn't moved, moved much at all, right? If there is just, I mean, if I'm being very critical, there is some shrinking, okay? Now, that happens to a lot of PPF because, again, it's plastic, right? When, it's, when the sun hits the panel, it, it heats up, it shrinks, it heats up, it shrinks, you know, and, and the plastics also do move in and expand in different speed and uh, dimension 
compared to the body panels, right? So it does happen, but look at it. Not obvious at all, right? And that is the testament to the quality of the PPF and the top coat that Expel is really proud of. Talking about top coat, just look at the gloss. Number one, no cracking at all. Again, this car is driven a lot. I went took it to Thailand and you know, I let the dirt sit on the car. Yeah, there is some livery and some stickers, but look, majority of the part does not get a sticker, but still, look at the gloss. I mean, you know, from the camera now, and even from my naked eyes, you can see that the reflection is amazing. Okay? A lot of PPF starts to look a bit tired over time, you know, and just starts to look like you're kind of stealing the gloss away from the paint. Uh, as you can see, Expel does retain that. You know, that's the testament to the quality of the top coat. Overall, I'm pretty happy. And I think we'll inspect that happiness level until we pull the PPF off. But before that, I want to show you what I've regretted with installing PPF in my car. My regret is not installing in other areas as well. So this one is a big one. There's a there is a big stone chip over here that went through the paint and you can just see the primer right over there. And this is actually, ironically, the day when I collected my car with the PPF, I was driving through um, a highway and someone was cutting grass on the side of the road and bam, boom, two little holes here. And uh, if I only had <laughs> PPF and listened to the advice, uh, rather than saving my money, I would have prevented that stone chip. Okay, what else? The other one that I regret is actually right over here. So during my Evo Enduro trip, I drove all the way to Thailand, 6,000 plus kilometers. Um, I didn't secure this that well, right? This little hook. And I was traveling at a high speed during the uh, highway commute, and this thing just snapped out, and it was just banging. Bam, 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 bam. And uh, what happened was there was multiple stone chips, not stone chips, sorry, damage marks over here. The paint has been ripped off, and if only I had PPF over here, <laughs> I would have prevented that. So if there's anything that I regret, it's not actually installing PPF for my full car, saving my money, you know, just to do the full front, I, I would have just done the full, you know. So right now, I'm going to have to respray my car just to cover up this damage over here. Uh, with that, we're going to pull off the PPF soon. And while pulling off, we're going to see if the uninstalling of PPF damages the paint because I've seen some PPF do it. I'm pretty nervous about that. Let's see if that happens over here. And uh, number two, let's see if the PPF actually did its work by sacrificing itself to protect the paint, right? Um, let's do that in a while. Okay, so far so good. The PPF is coming off super easy, right? But I want to show something. Uh, I want to put it away here. I want to see, right? It's actually pretty soft. It's not, it still maintains that softness. And I can still feel its glossiness on top. Now, it's a bit brown because it's dirty. I didn't wash my car for a week, but that, that shows the quality of the PPF and no residue behind so far. Pretty, pretty exciting, huh? Okay. Okay, we just ripped off the PPF from the bonnet and the bumper, right? Now, in disclaimer, normal circumstances, you wouldn't want to remove the PPF anyways because as you saw in the previous video, it looked okay. There's no need to remove it. I'm just doing it right now because I want to show you what's underneath the PPF, okay? Now, first and foremost, let's take a look at the overall surface. Um, it looks like there was no damage done. And the other thing I want to pay attention to is the glue residue. Now, I, we've just ripped it off. You can see there's some water droplets and stuff because we haven't got time to clean the car, right? So there is no glue residue on the paint. On the microphone is here. You can hear there's nothing sticky. There are some very minor glue residues here and there where the steamer didn't hit. But overall, it's, in, it's clear. And this, why is this important is because some PPF, as you remove it, they leave behind a lot of glue residue and then it leaves behind even the PPF, so you have to peel out bit by bit. Okay, and that takes a lot of time. Here, uninstalling and installing is uh, pretty fast. Okay, um, that was just done in what, 20 minutes? Yeah, 
So that's the first one over here. Stone chips. Now, I can't see much visible stone chips from um, this distance. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the camera and I'm going to bring you closer to see if we can find uh, stone chips. Okay, let's get up close and personal with the car to see how it's like. Okay? So, first and foremost, there's only a little bit of glue residue. Okay? So there are some PPF, when you remove, they leave behind so much glue residue and you take more than a day or two just to <laughs> handle the whole car. Right? Uh, I'm going to show you a clip of one of the Rolls Royces with inferior PPF. It was really bad and that car definitely needs a respray. But in this case, see, no, not at all, right? So no glue residue, okay? Um, as for the protection, almost no stone chips. Look at that. Let's, let's do a zoom in to see if there's any damages, right? Oh, that's the glue residue. But let's take a look. Right, down here you should get more because it's the bumper. Okay, there's one, right? And there's a little bit, that's the one I've been concerned about. So it actually went through the PPF and a few over here. Take in mind, all right, that it could have been worse. Just take a look at this. That's how much stone chips that my car gets, you know, over the last two and a half years. Look at that. Just look at all this. Okay, can you imagine this in all of this? <laughs> that would look really, really bad, right? So it, for me, is satisfactory because it did its job of protecting the car but keep in mind again i'm using the 8 mil ppf they have a 10 mil option which in the future i'm going to have that on the bumper instead because i do need the extra protection right down over here okay now i want to highlight something over here Damn! there is some damage over here and before some of you guys say oh my god expels ppf is causing this now let me just put a disclaimer, okay? I need to be fair, right? Um, and, and yeah, I could have just hidden this from the review, but I didn't want, I wanted everyone to see this. Now what happened, as you can see, there are two little points over here that the paint came out. This was actually an accident. <laughs> I was in Thailand and I rolled my car towards a sidewalk in this angle. Because, you know, when you're, when you're doing a parking with diagonal, this is exposed and there was a little sharp edge over here and I went, brap, hit right into here. And I think what happened was, you know, this, this little hit over here dented the plastic, hence the paint came off. Now, if I didn't remove the PPF, it wasn't obvious, right? It could have been worse, right? But because I removed the PPF, then it exposed the damage, okay? I believe one of the other contributing factors is that the bumper is not the original paint. I actually resprayed the hood bumper and fender two and a half years ago before I installed PPF. Now we installed the PPF quite briefly after the respray, therefore the paint didn't cure so well, therefore releasing some gas. So that could be one of the other theory as well. But then again, I don't believe it's expels PPF that caused the peeling of paint, as it requires no chemical or scraping to remove the PPF in all those other areas. And it barely left any glue residue in those areas as well. So overall, pretty darn good, right? Um, if I'm going to redo this in the future, I probably want to have my bumper after it's resprayed to have the 10 mil protection, okay? Uh, no, because I, or maybe even the hood, because this, this part gets a lot of damage, okay? Now, with that, I want to talk about another very important topic when it comes to choosing PPF for your car. Now, something else to consider when you're going to install PPF in your car is to choose pre-cut PPF. Now, there's a few reasons why. Now, before I continue, some of you might be thinking, Thomas, isn't hand cut more superior than pre cut? Because I get what you, you're thinking about. If I'm doing a hand cut, I can prevent having these edges around the car. That's kind of annoying. Okay? But here's the problem about hand cut. When you're using hand cut, number one, you have to stretch your PPF. And when you stretch your PPF, you're destroying the top coat. You're stretching it and breaking the top coat, which is the part that makes that sheen, that gloss and it's also what gives you that protection. Now imagine this, you have eight mils of protection and you stretch and stretch it, it's gonna get thinner and thinner, okay? So not only you open up pores, which gets dirtier, but also it's more susceptible to being damaged because it's thinner. So you get more blisters that cut right through the PPF, okay? And imagine it's open up, it hits the part that's not, not having that top coat, boom, there you go. And that's why if you use pre-cut, you don't need to stretch the PPF 
and you maintain the integrity of the top coat, right? Now, the other thing when you do hand cut is that you're going to use knives around this area, and when you do that, there's a risk of cutting your paint. Now, I'm not too comfortable with that, therefore, I opted for a normal pre-cut over here, also to have that thickness of PPF. Now, so how do you get over this little thing over here? Now, I didn't know this at the time when I'm installing, which is another regret I have, is that I can request Expel to actually print out a little bit more because they can edit on their software to get a little bit more PPF around the edge and they can wrap it around. So with the next PPF for my car, I want to request that and get rid of all these edges. Okay, some tip for you when you're installing PPF. Okay. All right, so with that, let's talk about the expectations of using PPF because it's very important to manage that especially when it costs quite some money. Now, the first one is this. Your PPF is not indestructible. Look, it's a sacrificial layer. Its job is to protect your car. And granted, if it protects majority of the damages, like stone chips, remember again, like the video I show, like that sort of sandy, white-looking, you know, uh, surface, it protects all of that, then it's really worth the money. There will be some damages that will blister your PPF. Well, it will cut your PPF, okay? And even if it cuts the PPF, as long as it protects the pain, job done. A little bit of blister here and there, don't need pick that. As long as it does majority of the protection while maintaining the aesthetic of your car. No yellowing, no cracking, uh, no peeling, those kind of things, okay? Now, the second thing is the maintenance of the PPF. Yes, your PPF does require maintenance. And regular maintenance will ensure that your PPF is not only nice and glossy, but it's to ensure that dirt doesn't bond onto it, right? End of the day, it is still some form of plastic TPU. It can hold on to dirt and you can discolor if you don't take care of it, right? So regular maintenance is warranted and that's why it's so important that you get the after sale support with PPF. Number three, regular washing. I can't stress how important is it, right? Again, it's exposed to so many elements, industrial fallout, you know, brake dust, you know, chemicals, sometimes things that can corrode. So making sure that you wash it on a regular basis is going to help you extend the life of the BPF. In my spider's case, as you can see from the video, it looks like, like you know, like nothing happened because I wash my car every single week, okay? With well, exception of the one time I went to Thailand and back, I didn't wash it for three weeks just to see how good it is and it still holds up to the abuse, okay? With that, it's important to express this as well for, my, for me that PPF is not for everybody. Look, for some people, whether you are a car enthusiast or whether a car is just a transportation tool for you, some people just don't really care how the exterior looks like, right? So don't fall in that trap that, oh, you must get PPF for your car because everyone is doing it. And then you go for a cheap one and then it starts cracking and, you know, peeling, etc., etc. Then, you know, it's going to cost you more money. It's going to look worse in your car. Sometimes, just don't, you don't need to get it, right? It's not for everybody. Okay, so with that, who are the people that will use PPF? Now, in my opinion, there are two. The first one would be, let's say you got a car and it has this really special paint from the factory. Maybe it's Porsche PTS or maybe it's a special Ferrari color like a Fuji Bianco or something like that, right? Or maybe you have a color that, you know, is difficult to respray or rematch panels if you damage it, like Mazda Soul Red. And if you're concerned about that, then maybe investing in PPF will be a good choice. Now, the second kind of people would be someone like me. Look, I like my cars looking great all the time, okay? As much as possible. Look, you can, technically, you can respray your bumper or respray your hood every single time and maybe it will cost just as much as the PPF for some people, okay? But how about in between the sprays? Can, is it okay if you look at your car and you have all that stone chips? Now, I can't deal with that, right? So for me, right, specifically enthusiasts like who cares about how the cars look, then it's a worthwhile investment to maintain the aesthetic of your car. Especially when you do a lot of driving and you just love to keep your car nice and pristine. So those are the two people I think really benefit and appreciate the use of PPF. So if you're looking for high quality PPF, I highly recommend Expel. Now, some of you are probably thinking, Thomas, you are an ambassador for Expel. I'm obviously going to say that it's great. Now, something people may not know is that way before I became an ambassador, I was really a raving fan of Expel. I just got the privilege to be able to represent the company that I believe in, all right? So thank you, Expel Malaysia, for choosing me to be an ambassador. 
Now, let's talk about the reasons I chose Expel before I became an ambassador all right, and continue to choose Expel. Number one is the age. Now, Expel has been around for two decades plus, and their warranty period is six years right, for the Ultimate Plus uh, PPF. So in my logic, well, it's gone through the test of time. It's proven. 20 years of existence and six years warranty, that all makes sense to me, and I'm paying the premium for that sort of assurance. Now, there are many brands out there. I'm not saying that they are bad. I just don't know because it's, if the company is three years old, four years old, or five years old, and then they're giving you a five-year or 10-year warranty, you know, it remains to be seen. And it's, in my opinion, sort of a bit of a risk. But if the company has proven itself through a period of time, you know, that's a premium that you're going to pay for. And for me, I just want the best for my car because I just love how my car looks, all right? And which leads to my second point. Expel is not only a pioneer, but also an expert in car protection. Now, again, 20 plus years, and they invented, pioneered a lot of technologies. The first one is something like DAP, as you see behind there. DAP is a software to pre-cut PPF. So they've been involved with that for a long period of time, selling their software to other companies. The second thing they pioneer, example, is the self healing property of a PPF. So they're serious about it, and they keep putting their money in R&D into PPF. That's why I trust them more when it comes to taking care of my beloved car. Now, which leads me to the third point. Expel's products are actually certified by SGS standards. Now, I won't go into details of it, but SGS is the top five quality testing company internationally. You can just Google that. And Expel's products are all certified and gone through the stringent test of SGS to make sure that every single roll that comes out of the factory are of top quality, right? So you can trust that. And last but not least is the customer service. Not only they provide great customer service, in my experience of using PPF from Expel Malaysia, but you have a wide network of distributors and dealers around Malaysia. I'll put the link in the description below for you to find out which are the nearest outlet to you to get a quotation. But to know that you can always get the service even after you install your PPF. And that's very, very important, right? With that, I hope you enjoyed this video and found this useful. If it does, please help me hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and also let me know in the comments below what else do you want to know about PPF. And I hope this video has given you more information for you to make a decision for your car, right? And as always, if you want to find out more about Expos products, link in the description below. Highly, highly recommend, right? Thanks for watching, guys, and see you in another video. And keep it 100. Peace out.